Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and in this video we are continuing our TypeScript series and we are moving ahead on to one of the another really important topic which is known as generics. I personally love generics when I'm writing a lot of production level code because generics is one such thing which makes your components reusable. And by the term component I mean to say all of your functions, even your arrays are generics behind the scene. So it is really important that you understand. Also it is also important that you don't pick up the word whenever I say component, it doesn't mean it always has to be a React component or Tailwind component. Component is a broader term. It simply means there is a chunk of something. It can be a Tailwind chunk, it can be a React chunk, it can be just a function. So understand that point. Now let's go ahead and move forward into understanding the generics. I'll first walk you through with the documentation part because it's important that we all learn how to read the documentation and find out some of the example which floats around all the web but these examples actually come from the documentation. And after that we'll understand a bit of the array and we'll design a couple of these generic methods and we'll understand what kind of problem they're trying to solve. So without a further ado, let's go ahead and move on to the documentation part. So here I'm onto the web page of the TypeScript where official documentation happens. And on the left, you can easily find the generics, really easy to find, there is nothing much. You can see just the type manipulation, generics just there. So as we can see up here, uh, generics are a major part and also notice the vocabulary that they also use is building components that not only have well-defined and consistent APIs, but are reusable. And again, APIs is something that you can ignore right now, which is just an example they're trying to give here. So component is something which is capable of doing something more than it was originally designed and almost all languages have them, C Sharp, Java, uh, Swift. There is a lot of languages which actually support these generics, so pretty common thing these days, but it was such a groundbreaking at the earlier days. Now there is a nice example, we'll recreate these examples, but notice here what they're trying to show you in these examples. So it says without generics, we would either have to give identify, identity function a specific type. So what they're doing here is they have created an identity function and they're providing an argument which is a type of number and which also returns a number. When you do a return of arg, which is whatever you're passing into that method, it returns you the number. So this is obvious, we have been doing this. But if we want to design this function in such a way that if it takes string, it also returns a string. So we have to say that arg string, then the return type is a string and when you return the string, so we have to define the function for each data type, boolean, string, number. And if you want to bypass that, you want to design a function in such a way that whatever the data type you actually send it, it also returns that data type. So one way or one common thing which comes to mind is always, hey, let's use any, which is not a good idea always. It's such a breakthrough that you always want to get away from the things using any. Here, we can definitely use any, but it actually removes some of the information from the, from the argument that you're passing. For example, I can accept any argument and return any, but what if I give you input as number and you return me back as a string, it will still work. So this is not something that we want. So in that case, this uh, type actually comes up which has these angular brackets. And this is something which denotes the generic type. And there is a lot that we can discuss about generic. We'll come back onto the documentation a little bit uh, later, but right now let's go ahead and open up VS Code. So here is my VS Code. And let's go ahead and create a new file into the source. And we're going to call this one as my generics.ts, of course. And let's go ahead and see that what kind of problem we are facing and how actually this problem is not really big and already being solved by something. So let's just say if I go ahead and create an array and notice here there are a couple of ways how you can create array. We have already seen it once, but this is a common way of creating array. But we have also seen that you can go ahead and create an array like this. And then using these angular brackets, you can mention that this array is going to have a value number. And we can store this into anything, like for example, this could be a score of any game that you're playing. So this is scored like this and not that. There we go. And we have defined its type. And now we can say that this is right now empty, but eventually uh, things will come out into the definition. So this is one of the way. And again, we can actually go ahead and further improve it. We can go ahead and design the arrays, something like this. So you get the idea, there is a, a string as well. And we can go ahead and store this into, let's just say we are going to have some names. So these values can be also like this. 
So you get the idea that generics is not something that we are designing in the language. They are already in the language. In fact, most of the language do support arrays with different numbers and different strings. So yes, this was already existing there. We just didn't talk about it. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about it and we're going to design a method version by version so that we can reach there and understand what is the use case of that. So I'll keep them here so that you can have just for the reference. So let's use the same example. We're going to have identity identity and we're going to call this one as identity one because we're going to create multiple identities here so let's first understand what is the challenge that let's just say i want to create an identity such that it accepts either a number or maybe a boolean as well so we have already seen that we can go ahead and do this we can go ahead and define the type as let's just say boolean is there and we can use this or and we can go ahead and say you might be having a number as well and in the return type also we can go ahead and say that we can have something like uh we are going to return a boolean or that can return as a number or a string whatever you like so this is perfectly a valid code and i can go ahead and say return a val now there is a lot of confusion here so if i go ahead and say return val it can be either a number or it can either be a boolean i can go ahead and do the check whether the type of the value is boolean then go ahead and return a boolean if the type of num of value is a number go ahead and return a number we have seen that kind of example in the past but this doesn't actually cut through the problem that we are facing it doesn't work for a string surely we can go ahead and use or and how many ors you are going to use there now we saw in the documentation that we have identity uh, two let's just say and here we saw that we can take in value and that can be any which is really a horrible keyword it is there for escaping some of the tricky situation but it shouldn't be used much and we can go ahead and use any and we can go ahead and say hey i want to return uh, this val now again the problem remains same. Uh, TypeScript has no idea what the value is comprised of and the definition or the information about the type is gone in this case. So we can go ahead and see that yeah, this identity 2 is e also not working. So let's move on to the version which actually is the topic. So which is going to be identity 3. And in the identity 3 what we're doing is we first go ahead and put angular bracket. Now this is super important for the syntax and we go ahead and define a type here. Now once we define a type here into the identity 3, then we can go ahead and take the parameter. And this is a little bit weird syntax, I'll give you on that, no escape from that part, no uh, sugarcoating there. And we can go ahead and say this value is going to be of a certain type and the return is going to be also of type. Okay. Now, interestingly, what is going to happen after this one is now you can go ahead and return and return this value. Now, the difference between the one where we said value of any is this could be anything. And this also could be anything. So we can take any type of value, return any type of value. Take number as input, return as a string. <laughs> not a big, not a good idea. Now, but when you say mention the type, it actually says, hey, this is almost like any. I am ready to accept numbers, I am ready to accept string, whatever you like. So how is it different from any? Because once you actually pass on anything, that value type is logged. Yes, for the reference or understanding purpose, this is easier to understand. So whenever I give number as an input, this says, hey, the number is the input type that is coming up. So the value you are accepting is going to be of number, but the return type automatically becomes a number. So that is the advantage of using this. For example, if I go ahead and say, hey, I want to use identity 3. And while the identity 3, I'm going to go ahead and pass on a number 3 here. Now notice here, as I say, it says, hey, the value that you are giving me is 3 and it is going to return as 3 value. But if I go ahead and wrap this up as a string, it automatically converts that, hey, you are taking 3 as an input, but I'll return you as 3 as a string. So that is the advantage of it. If I go ahead and say, hey, this is going to be Hitesh, then you go ahead and check it out by hovering. It says, hey, it is giving me a string, I'll return you a string. Not only that, you can go ahead and say that, hey, I want to go ahead and give you a true value and it is going to give you a Boolean as a back. So you're locking that value. That is the most important aspect of it. And this is something that you're going to see less, this function definition type like this. How most people like to define it is a bit of a shortcut one. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, this is identity four. And then you go ahead and see Angular bracket, a T capital version, and then whatever the parameter you take, for example, value, you go ahead and define the type as T. And then the return type is also going to be T. And we're going to go ahead and say, hey, let's just return a T. 
not T, a val. There we go. Now, this again is exactly same as line number 12 to 14. This is exactly a replica of line number 18 to 20. The only difference is calling it as identity 3 or 4. Now, this is shortcut. It doesn't mean it always have to be types or T. You can call it as uh, simply as H every places. That's also totally valid. But it needs to be referenced the same letter that you're using or a word that you are using. So this is really basic. You're going to see them a lot being there. Now, the advantage of this identity four or something like this, having this data type is you can actually define your own types and can pass on into this one. It's generic. Anything can be uh, passed on to it, this one. So for example, let's just say we define an interface of this bottle. So we're going to go ahead and say, hey, bottle, interface bottle. There we go. And your bottle can have anything that you want. For example, it will it is going to have a brand, which is going to be a string. And also, let's just say type. There are a lot of types of bottle. This is a gym bottle. So type is gym. And uh, not gym, actually. This is, again, let's just say a number. I don't know why the type should be anything like that. But this is it. Now you can go ahead and use this function exactly like this. So we can say, hey, I want to use identity for. And I'm going to go ahead and pass you a type of bottle. So I can go ahead and say, that, hey, just like I was able to use and pass on this three, I am I can go ahead and say, hey, I'll be using a bottle and then I'll pass on you an object like that. So this is totally valid. Of course, I'm not passing an object which is missing the parameters of bottle and brand and type, which you can actually do that if you're following around the series. But this is a way, this is a syntax, how I can pass on. Now, the data types that we saw here are actually the default ones, like the old fashioned uh, numbers, a string, you can directly pass on them. But if you're trying to create your own, then you have to use this syntax. This is really a little bit weird, but yeah, eventually you'll get a, uh, get a hold of it. And this is. So as you can see, genetics actually solves a great deal and is really reusable and we can use them a lot. Let's go back up here onto the documentation. So this is exactly what they have mentioned in the documentation that you can have the identity and can pass on my string up here. And working with the generic type variables, this is how they actually go ahead and work on with that. We have already gone through with these and we'll definitely discuss a little bit more about the generic, but to be honest, uh, this is only the meat part of generic. As you work through with the React or Angular, you'll find that we use them a lot and sometimes methods are defined this way. So let's keep this short. I hope you have understood the basic core concept, why generics exist and how we can use them. And let's go ahead and catch up in next video.